Scalia goes through the developmental process of the Second Amendment, and I think that you're misinterpreting what he's saying. So, now listen to me here. An average of six times as many people are shot as in other mass shootings. Um, are you calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment? They should be responding. Reclaiming my time. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to 40 me, seconds I've seen my reply. constituents die in battle. I'm prepared to accept the way the Supreme Court has interpreted the Second Amendment and to try. Irresponsible to allow people without specialized training to possess these weapons. The Supreme Court rejected a stay that would have preserved a state's Second Amendment sanctuary statute in an 8-1 to ruling. But there has been an amendment in this case that allows a circuit court panel to rule in favor of the law. Targeting federal arm curbs. The Supreme Court of the United States decided not to reinstate a legislation that was passed in Missouri. This law prohibits state and local officials from implementing some federal arm restrictions. The law, which was drafted by Republicans, had claimed to nullify these limits because they violated the rights to weapons that are guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the Constitution. A plea made by Missouri officials to prevent a federal judge's finding that invalidated the 2021 state law known as the Second Amendment Preservation Act was denied by the Supreme Court of the U.S., handing a victory to the administration of President Joe Biden. The right to keep and bear arms is enshrined in the Second Amendment of the Constitution. In 2022, the administration filed a lawsuit against the state of Missouri in an effort to halt the statute. It had argued that the bill violated a constitutional principle known as the Supremacy Clause, which states that federal law takes precedence over state laws that are in conflict with one another. It had advocated for the Supreme Court to not resuscitate the measure. The administration stated that the legislation violated the standards that govern weapons in the United States and that it harmed the safety of the general public. In a statement released, Conservative Justice Clarence Thomas hinted that he would have made the decision to reinstate the Missouri legislation. The measure, which had been signed into law by Republican Governor Mike Parson at an arms shop the previous year, was challenged in court by the Biden administration in 2022 in an effort to prevent it from taking effect. According to the Missouri law, certain federal regulations that govern taxes, sale of arms, and restrictions on the possession of arms by individuals who have been convicted of certain felonies, convicted of a misdemeanor charge of domestic crime, people who have been dishonorably discharged from the military, and a few other individuals were deemed invalid on the grounds that they violated the rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment. State and municipal officials were threatened with fines of up to $50,000 if they were found to be intentionally upholding federal arm regulations that were deemed to be in violation of the Second Amendment by the state legislature, which is controlled by Republicans. It has been said by the administration of President Joe Biden that the statute has caused a significant number of state and local law enforcement agencies in the state of Missouri to cease voluntarily aiding in the enforcement of federal arm laws or providing cooperation with investigations. In a verdict that was handed down in March, U.S. District Judge Brian Wyams declared the law to be illegal because it violated the Supremacy Clause. While purporting to protect citizens, the Missouri law exposes citizens to greater harm by interfering with the federal government's ability to enforce lawfully enacted arms regulations designed by Congress for the purpose of protecting citizens, Wimes wrote, which opens another window. The 8th United States Circuit Court of Appeals, which is located in St. Louis, did not grant the request to stay the judge's order in September, which prompted authorities from the state of Missouri to petition the Supreme Court for emergency relief. Arm rights, which are held dear by a large number of Americans and were given by the founders of the country in the 18th century, are a difficult topic in a society that has high levels of weapons crime, including a number of mass slayings. In contrast to the majority of Republicans, President Biden who has referred to the issue of armed crime as a national embarrassment and a significant number of his fellow Democrats are in favor of limitations on arms. Due to the fact that it has a conservative majority of 6-3, to three, the Supreme Court has issued three key opinions since 2008 that have adopted a broad interpretation of the rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment. The most recent of these occurred in 2022, when the Supreme Court made the first official declaration 
that the Second Amendment protects an individual's right to carry an arm in public for the purpose of self-defense. In its current term, the Supreme Court is going to resolve a significant case involving arms, which will test whether or not a federal statute that prohibits the possession of arms by individuals who are subject to restraining orders for domestic crime violates the Second Amendment. For the 7th of November, there will be arguments. Scalia goes through the developmental process of the Second Amendment, and I think that you're misinterpreting what he's saying. So, now listen to me here. An average of six times as many people are shot as in other mass shootings. Um, are you calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment? They should be responding. Reclaiming my time, so Mr. Chairman, I'd like me. 40 seconds I've seen back on my constituents clock. die in battle. I'm prepared to accept the way the Supreme Court has interpreted the Second Amendment and to try irresponsible to allow people without specialized training to possess these weapons. Quick follow-up, I mean, so what you're telling us that Civil Rights Division will not protect Second Amendment rights? Crosshairs at U.S. Supreme Court. It is expected that the U.S. Supreme Court, which issued a historic decision in the previous year that enlarged armed rights, will return to the topic in a key case that will test whether or not a statute that prohibits persons from possessing arms while they are subject to domestic crime restraining orders, violates the Constitution. It is one of the most significant issues that the court, which has a conservative majority of 6 to 3, has decided to hear during its upcoming term, which will begin in October. Important decisions were handed down by the Supreme Court justices this week, which included the rejection of affirmative action in college admissions, the undercutting of LGBT rights, and the invalidation of President Joe Biden's student loan relief. These decisions came after the judges had overturned abortion rights a year earlier. Zaki Rahimi, a guy from Texas, was found guilty of violating a federal statute that was passed in 1994. This law states that a person who is subject to a domestic crime restraining order, as he was after hitting his fiance, is not allowed to own a handgun. He was successful in his challenge to his conviction which he based on the argument that the legislation infringed the right to keep and bear arms guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the Constitution. It has been appealed by the administration of Biden. As the race for the presidency of the USA intensifies, a decision is anticipated to be made by June 2024. The Supreme Court must reverse this dangerous ruling, said Janet Carter, who is a member of Everytown Law, an organization that works to reduce arm crime, Domestic abusers do not have, and should not have, the constitutional right to possess an arm. In the midst of a society that is seeing persistent arm crime, including mass slayings, the conservative majority of the court has adopted a broad interpretation of the rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment provides that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. Since 2008, the Supreme Court has issued three significant opinions that have expanded arm rights. In a decision that was handed down in June 2022 and titled New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, the court overturned the restrictions that the state of New York had placed on the carrying of concealed handguns outside of the home. In doing so, it established a new standard for evaluating legislation pertaining to arms, stating that limits must be consistent with this nation's historical tradition of arm regulation, and not just advance a vital government interest. In that particular test, Rahimi was victorious. I um, make clear that gun control is not an area that the Civil Rights Division, under any administration... This is a lever action. Under this bill, lever actions apparently are okay. ...force the laws that Congress gave us and uh, weighing in on Second Amendment and the gun control issues. ...bill will allow current law-abiding gun owners to keep all of their guns. Veterans Administration does not have the authority to remove constitutional rights now or ever. The previous ban on assault weapons. This has nothing to do with the Second Amendment caught with arms. Rahimi received a six-year prison sentence after pleading guilty to illegally possessing an arm while subject to a court-approved domestic crime restraining order his girlfriend obtained after he attacked and threatened to slay her. He later was arrested for violating it. He was involved in five slaying incidents 
spanning two months, and was caught with a pistol and rifle during a police search of his home, legal filing showed. Rahimi challenged his conviction, arguing that barring armed possession by people under restraining orders is unconstitutional under the Bruin case standard. The New Orleans-based Fifth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals agreed with a unanimous panel of three Republican-appointed judges, calling the ban an outlier that our ancestors would never have accepted. Judge James Ho, appointed by former President Donald Trump, in a concurring opinion said a restraining order can be obtained relatively easily, adding that there's a tremendous risk that courts will enter protective orders automatically, despite the absence of any real threat of danger. Biden's administration, in a filing by Solicitor General Elizabeth Prologar, told the Supreme Court the Second Amendment allows the government to disarm dangerous individuals, that is, those who would pose a serious risk of harm to themselves or to others if allowed to possess an arm. Gina Lungwitz, who directs the University of Texas School of Law's Domestic Crime Clinic, cited statistics showing that more than a third of American women slayed by men are slain by intimate partners with arms, and that domestic crime incidents involving an arm are 12 times more likely to result in demise than those without a arm. The stakes are high for those experiencing domestic crime if violent partners can legally possess arms, Lungwood said, not just high but deadly. 23 states, mostly Democratic-led, and groups advocating for prevention of armed crime and domestic abuse have urged the justices to preserve the law. Rahimi's lawyer declined to comment. The National Rifle Association, an influential arm rights group, did not respond to a request for comment. Pepperdine University Caruso School of Law professor Jacob Charles faulted the Bruin decision for eliminating the formal requirement that judges consider how effective a challenge law has been at preventing armed crime. We often think in terms of, is this law going to save lives? Is it going to decrease threats and intimidation without overly burdening the lawful use of arms? Charles said. By removing those kinds of considerations, it makes constitutional law and Second Amendment law in particular even more removed from the way that ordinary citizens think about constitutional protections. What we're doing is we are subverting the Second Amendment. And I support their ability to exercise their Second Amendment rights. But you guys did not participate in that. Yep. Do, you, do you disregard Second Amendment rights? Is that not important? The most popular handgun in the United States that was purchased is a Glock 19. Many of my constituents are responsible, law-abiding gun owners. My Democrat colleagues are the only body that are chartered by our Constitution that can change it. In the Heller case, the Supreme Court made clear that the Second Amendment protects firearms in common use. Second Amendment Preservation Act. Speaking of a crucial case, it concerned the recent 8 to 1 ruling by the Supreme Court and how it affected a state's sanctuary law. The recent ruling rejected a state's request to preserve Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act, and the state is now fighting back. The case is currently headed to the Court of Appeals, where we have notice of a favorable panel. In 2021, Missouri passed the Second Amendment Preservation Act which established the state's interpretation of the Second Amendment and placed limitations on the enforcement of conflicting federal laws. The statute forbids government employees and police in Missouri from assisting federal authorities who are seeking to enforce contradictory federal laws. This Missouri law essentially forbids local law enforcement agencies or officers from assisting federal ATF agents who are attempting to enforce unconstitutional federal rules such as the pistol brace rule or other regulations the ATF develops that violate the right to keep and bear arms. By using the Tenth Amendment as justification to refuse state resources that would be used by federal agents to essentially violate Second Amendment rights. The law also created a civil remedy where anyone could sue a Missouri official if that official helped to enforce a federal law that violates the Second Amendment. So a citizen could sue a state representative of Missouri who potentially is violating the Second Amendment. Now, of course, the federal government did not like this law, so the U.S. government sued the state of Missouri. Recently, the Supreme Court got involved in this case and denied a stay which would have allowed the state to continue to enforce this law, this Second Amendment Preservation and Protection Law. 
However, the fight right now in this case is far from over, because Missouri is already trying to fast-track this case. The Eighth Circuit has also been very active. They are fast-tracking this case, and it is set for arguments, and also it has been set for a favorable panel. Now in this case, the U.S. government sued Missouri under the theory that the law is unconstitutional because the statute is premised on an incorrect interpretation of the Second Amendment. Three-round burst or semi-automatic. Those firearms are not allowed for purchase in the United States today. We are doing what the Constitution says. I'm tired of locking I, I, state to state. i got to have uh, As the sheriff, we're the keeper of the jails. We do have a say who can come in and out of our jails. You say that crime went down, but did you know that the sales of the so-called assault weapons went up? For that reason, uh, these things aren't oftentimes falling into the wrong hands. But the Second Amendment is federal. Right now, New Hampshire has constitutional carry. We Essentially, the U.S. government argues that Missouri and their super pro-Second Amendment law is unconstitutional, and the government's more limited interpretation of the Second Amendment is in fact correct. The federal district court that reviewed this case agreed with the U.S. government and struck down this Missouri law in its entirety. The law permits any person in Missouri to sue a state agent or employee who attempts to enforce a federal law that violates the right to keep and bear arms. This is what makes the law so contentious. The district court issued an injunction prohibiting the state of Missouri and its agents from enforcing it. This Missouri law is essentially similar to what Texas did with their Texas abortion law and the recent Supreme Court decision in the Whole Women's Health case. That fact is also very important for what is going to happen now in this case and what the Supreme Court ultimately decided to do when they originally denied their request in that 8 to 1 decision. If you aren't aware of the Texas abortion law or SB 8, it prohibits an abortion if a fetal heartbeat is present. The law is different from other laws because it's not enforced by the state of Texas or any of its executives or officers or anyone involved in the state. Instead, it allows an individual, a resident or citizen to sue another individual or maybe some company or a doctor who performs or knowingly aids and abets in that activity. Here's where things become very relevant for what Missouri is doing with the Second Amendment Preservation Act and the recent Supreme Court denial. SB 8 shielded Texas and officials from lawsuits since. Piece of legislation and voting on whether this nation is going to be all in on a new nuclear arms race. And if, some, if a governor violates those, laws, uh, those rights directly, is that not important enough for the Civil Rights Division to get involved in? Assault weapons are designed to kill as many people as possible as quickly. We could file a lawsuit. Well, the lawsuit was filed in the case that the chairman was talking about. There's a hearing that you can't be at, your counsel can't be present, you haven't been charged with the crime. It is an important, the Second Amendment, of course, is an important part of our Constitution, Congressman. It simply prevents future sales of assault rifles. Intricacies of Enforcement Mechanisms The statute allows only individuals to bring a lawsuit, not the state or any officials. The enforcement mechanism of the law was designed to make it harder, if not impossible, to have the entire law struck down. In reality, courts don't actually strike down laws. Instead, they place injunctions against the enforcement of a law. For example, a court can enjoin the state of Missouri or the Missouri Attorney General and their officers and agents from enforcing the law, resulting in essentially nullifying the law. With SB 8 in Texas, however, this enforcement scheme complicates the process of obtaining an umbrella injunction against the state and its attorney general. Since SB 8 is not enforced by the state or its agents, you cannot seek an injunction against them altogether. Additionally, you couldn't even get an injunction against the judge who hears a case or the clerks, as they aren't the ones enforcing the law. Instead, the court ruled that you would have to get an injunction against each and every citizen and each plaintiff that is suing and bringing those lawsuits. This is the backdrop of Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act, which uses a similar enforcement scheme. Although it's a law passed prior, it incorporates many similar concepts. The Supreme Court considered this aspect when the case made its way back to them. The Federal District Court, upon review, struck down the entire Missouri law and enjoined the state of Missouri and its officials 
from enforcing it. However, the issue remains complex. In any case, individuals enforce it. None of them really do. Missouri then appealed that decision up to the Eighth Circuit and also asked for a stay of the decision while the appeal is taking place. However, the Eighth Circuit denied that stay. That then led the state of Missouri to file an emergency application up to the U.S. Supreme Court and wanted them to grant a stay. We got an order from the U.S. Supreme Court, which was an 8-to-1 order denying that state of Missouri's request for an emergency stay. The order of the Supreme Court states, The application for stay presented to Justice Kavanaugh and by him referred to the court is denied. Justice Thomas would grant the application for stay. So, Justice Thomas was the only justice who would have granted the stay, but we did get a statement from Justice Gorsuch and also Justice Alito, which shed a little bit of light on maybe how some of these other conservative justices were thinking and why they decided to deny this stay, and kind of what their thought process was. This is what they said in that language. With the understanding that the district court prohibited only implementation and enforcement of HB 85 by the state of Missouri and its officers, agents, and employees, and any others in active concert with such individuals, I agree with the denial of the application for a stay under the present circumstances, an injunction purporting to bind private parties not before the district court or the challenge. And you're actively, willfully, and knowingly subverting the Constitution of the United States of America. And they're coming for your firearm. Six weeks ago, it was the red flag law. Which is incredibly difficult on purpose, so you can't willy-nilly change these things. To a member on the Democratic side that served in a combat area designated zone uh, and deployment of our country. On Tuesday, a new bill was signed into law that outlaws the sale and manufacturing of semi-automatic assault weapons. For years, the Democrats told us we're not coming for your guns. Oh, yes, they are. It does need to be a more uniform way of doing that. What I will tell you is I will always fight to protect Second Amendment rights. I'd also like to address the House on an issue that occurred yesterday in Maine, another assault weapon. Legal developments and ongoing challenges. Provisions themselves, however, would be inconsistent with the equitable powers of federal courts. They cite whole women's health, emphasizing the significance of the decision. The goal of the Supreme Court emergency request was to get a stay, but only Justice Thomas was in favor of granting that stay. Justice Alito and Gorsuch provided language in their order stating that the district court's injunction only applies to the state and its agents, not preventing private individuals from suing and still enforcing the law. This aligns with the fundamental purpose of the law. Even after the Supreme Court's 8-to-1 order, the state of Missouri has not given up. They responded quickly by filing for expedited review of this case in the Eighth Circuit. Given some uncertainty about the status quo changing, the state of Missouri aimed to bring this challenge swiftly. The Eighth Circuit recently issued an order expediting the review of this case, and oral arguments are set to take place on February 16th. News also surfaced about the panel of judges who will be reviewing this case in the Eighth Circuit. The judges are James B. Loken, a Bush appointee, Stephen Colleton, another Bush appointee, and Jane Kelly, an Obama appointee. The panel appears to be balanced, potentially leaning two to one in favor of conservative judges. This suggests a favorable decision, setting the stage for a potential end bank review in the Eighth Circuit, and subsequently the case making its way back up to the U.S. Supreme Court. The key question revolves around the constitutionality of Second Amendment State Preservation Acts. Can a state restrict its employees, agents, or anyone from enforcing inconsistent federal laws? This is a compelling question that the Supreme Court might consider addressing. As of now, the case is in front of a three-judge panel in the Eighth Circuit, showing promise for a favorable outcome. The proceedings are expected to move swiftly, with a decision likely to be reached this year, shaping the trajectory of this legal battle. State lawmakers are considering several changes to gun laws, including making these much easier to get. The Second Amendment says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You gotta like figure out what law I'm in and I'm Google. The, the gun rights have to become federal. Stop it. The number of so-called assault rifles, what you all are calling assault rifles, had doubled. Investigators later determined the shootings went unreported simply because 
no one heard them. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.